Hello and welcome to LinuxOrt. The internet has become a massive web of surveillance. This is a very sad but also kind of true story because Firefox added a new feature in the latest version which does track ads by default. Yeah, in the last days Mozilla released a new version and they want to improve privacy for everyone by activating a feature which is not for us users but for the ads industry and this is why many people are now upset about Mozilla. I would say Mozilla is the last real alternative to the Chromium based browsers because Opera, Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, also Brave for example, they all have the same web engine underneath it. It is called Blink and Firefox and Firefox is one of the last browsers which are having their own web engine which is quite important I would say. But yeah Firefox changed a lot in the last years which is not really privacy focused. Let's speak about what actually changed. If we head over to the settings we see them here and then we head over to privacy and security we see here website advertising preferences allow websites to perform privacy preserving ad measurement. What does it actually mean? For example, if I go to YouTube and if I open up a new video, then we see some ads on the right side, for example. And what Firefox does is to track such ads if we click on such an ad. And this data is collected by millions browsers of Mozilla and then sent anonymized to the ads industry. I would say it's not a big privacy concern at the first point, but what makes me really upset is that Mozilla Firefox added a feature not for us users. It added a feature which slightly decreases our privacy but helps the ads industry a lot. And this is, in my opinion, a completely wrong direction Mozilla is heading into with Firefox. And one of the last big arguments of Firefox, yeah, use Firefox instead of Chrome because then you have some special privacy features. Yeah, these are still present, but the privacy is decreasing. For example, if we head over to settings here, privacy security, we also see which is by default allowed Firefox data collection and use, allow Firefox to send technical and interaction data to Mozilla. Also allow Firefox to install and run studies, which could actually mean anything I would say, which I also would recommend to opt out. Also the website advertising preferences. This is this new feature. I would personally also turn it out. We don't have any use of it. It's just a setting completely for the ads industry. So what alternatives do we have out there? Would I change from Firefox or which browsers would I recommend you to use in your daily browsing sessions? I would say let's have a look at some alternatives. The best alternative from Alternative 2, it's a great site, is Waterfox. I personally don't prefer Waterfox because you can't really install it on your system and you can't really update it in an automated way. The Linux support is just horrible if it comes to installation methods. And also what I don't like about many small projects which are just a fork of for example Firefox, Chromium and so on, just small projects is that many projects don't deliver security updates fast enough. So I personally wouldn't recommend them and only recommend them if you are really knowing what you are doing. So yeah, Waterfox and all the other small browsers, for example, Iron Wolf, I guess it's a browser. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend them. Also, if we have a look at Brave, I also use Brave for about one or two years. It isn't a bad browser, but for me, it had some functionality which wasn't quite finished and it doesn't feel complete in some ways if you're using it longer. And also you have something like cryptocurrency rewards. Not every person is into it. So Brave has a great concept, I would say. And it has also a ton of privacy protecting features by default, which could be an alternative, but I personally didn't get warm with it in the long run. 
Let us come to Vivaldi. It's another browser which is based on Chromium, but it's proprietary, so I wouldn't recommend it at all. Also, I wouldn't recommend Opera or Opera GX and such browsers because they are not open source and you don't really know what they are doing and sending and how they are doing some things. So I would stay away from these browsers. Let us come to Chromium. Chromium is the open source version of Google Chrome, but it has no privacy protecting features by default. But on the other hand, it's just a great base for a web browser. It doesn't have too many features I won't use. It's very performant, very fast. And I would say, yeah, it just works. Also, Chromium doesn't send too much data by default. I would even say it's even with Firefox in sending data. So for me personally, it's a great alternative I could recommend. So yeah, these were all big alternatives I personally would consider or which are worth talk about. Also, there is something like LibreWolf and so on. I didn't had any experience with them. But yeah, the smaller the user base, the more potential I would say you would have about missing security updates. So yeah, I would say there isn't a 100% alternative as a browser I can recommend you completely. But I show you what I do use and how I do set these browsers. I'm personally using Chromium and Firefox. I would also recommend you to have an additional browser installed on your system because when a website doesn't work on the one browser, it will probably work on the other browser. And it's always great to have an alternative. And for me, these are still yeah, Firefox and also Chromium. Chromium doesn't have any DRM features, for example, for streaming, but it is better in video conferences and is a bit more performant, I would say. And so, yeah, let's come to the settings, how I set up these two browsers. I would say, let's start with Firefox. I open up the settings menu and head over to search. And you could change the default search engine. For example, DuckDuckGo is great. Yeah, you can use whatever you want. I am going with DuckDuckGo in this example. Also, we are heading to privacy and security. And here, Firefox has a great privacy feature, the enhanced tracking protection. Just activate the strict one. It doesn't affect the usability of the websites. I didn't had any complications in the past with it. So yeah, great tool. I really recommend you this. And also, I would recommend you to disable the Firefox data collection and use and also to disable the website advertising preferences, which we have done a couple of minutes before. Here, deceptive content and dangerous software protection, block dangerous and deceptive content. Yeah, but for blocking such content, Firefox has to know is this content, which I am showing, yeah, <laughs> dangerous and deceptive. For this, Firefox is asking also Google, I would say. In my personal opinion, the advantages are greater than the disadvantages. So I have this one enabled, but yeah, just keep this in mind. Yeah, also you could activate something like HTTPS only mode, but I'm not a great fan of it because almost all websites are HTTPS by default. So I personally don't have this activated, but when it comes to privacy, then you can always do more. So just feel free to also activate this. And also you could activate DNS over HTTPS. I would leave it to the default protection, but you can also use the max protection. Maybe it will work for a great time, but DNS over HTTPS is kind of new. I personally have this as the default protection. But as I said, yeah, you can do more privacy every time, but you can't combine privacy with usability. It's always a trade-off, so the decision is up to you. How is it, for example, also with the Tor browser? I personally wouldn't use this in my daily browsing, but sometimes it could also come in quite handy. But I would say I wouldn't recommend this by default. So yeah, this is everything to Firefox, but yeah, just a moment. Here we have our Firefox start page and I can personalize and disable the shortcuts here. And also sometimes in the German version of Firefox, you have some other articles which are presented. 
right under the shortcuts, but in this version it isn't. <laughs> but you can also deactivate this at this gear here. And then you have a very clean new tab. And I personally like just a browser which just does its thing which isn't too complicated displays my websites play some videos do some video conferencing stuff and this is fine so yeah this is for firefox how do i use chromium browser i open this up at the first time i have the linux mint version here so i head over to settings here and you can see you and google and also sync and google services these are disabled by default in the chromium version of linux mint this is quite cool so it doesn't send the urls of pages that you visit to google but it does improve search suggestions if the search engine does support it so if you for example type in linux then sometimes the search engine presents you some options you could search for but with Yahoo search, this doesn't work by default. I don't know, honestly, but yeah, you can also disable this if you don't want any suggestions in your search bar from your search engine provider. Also head over to privacy and security. Here we have a privacy guide. Here you can see how do I want to set my privacy. Here we can see make searches and browsing better, but yeah, it has some trade-offs with privacy. So I disable this and um, yeah, you can just do this through also a feature to consider is the ads privacy here you can see okay do i want specific ad topics for me do i want some site suggested ads and also do i want to participate in the ads measurement and that's very funny this is quite the same feature which firefox has now enabled by default and yeah chromium doesn't have this enabled by default but to be fair chromium will ask you in some minutes or hours or some days if you open up chromium do you want to activate this and many people i would say yeah just click on okay but by default in the linux mint version of chromium this all is disabled which is a great start also if you head up to the search engine just change it for example to start page or DuckDuckGo. I personally change it to DuckDuckGo and then this is cool. We can also activate Google, but for that you have some special settings to do. I will link you this in the video description if you want to use Google as a search engine, but then yeah, your privacy isn't the best I would say. But yeah, these are the settings I would choose in terms of privacy in these both browsers and which browser I'm using daily. I would say I'm using Chromium daily. It's just a great experience. It just works and it's a bit faster and more performant at some websites, but I'm also using a lot of Firefox because it's also just a nice web browser, but both web browsers are really basic. I had also a German blog article, which is from 2017, but yeah, it's kind of up to date in some cases. There are some add-ons which are recommended in terms of privacy. Just have a look at these. I personally don't recommend you to use too many add-ons, but there are quite good add-ons I'm also using sometimes. So just have a look at them if you want to enhance your privacy because Firefox does protect your privacy by default or does protect you from the websites. Chromium doesn't do anything in these terms, but it also doesn't send too much to other companies. So in my opinion, these both browsers, which some privacy settings are still good and for me, my best option. But again, there isn't the best solution for anything. We don't have the best web browser you could just use without any considerations. So now I want to ask you, which web browsers are you using? In which web browser are you watching this video? Just write it me into the comments. And I also want to do a survey. Which browsers are you using? I will do a survey and I will link it into the video description and in the pinned comment under the video. So I would be happy if you take one minute and fill this form out. I will present you the results in one of the next videos or in the community tab. So yeah, that was it for today. 
If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel on Linux Art. We are publishing a video about Linux and open source every week. And I would say, see you in the next one. Bye.